Board. Uh, Alicia Muck is a uh, town center resident ish. Yeah, ish. Like the next house a like, after. Like three it. houses out of the way. Brian Kegel is a citizen at large. Citizen at large. And Phil Churchill is also a, uh, a Main Street resident. So we are four of the nine members. As I said, we have a couple other Main Street resident members that are on the committee, another citizen at large, uh, a library trustee. Uh, so it's a pretty good group. And what we've been doing is we've been meeting for a year and a half or so, might even be more than that now. Um, and it, it started, it started uh, um, with no real plan um, as far as where we were going to be going with things. But what we did over the course of time was we set some milestones for ourselves and said, okay, you know, we need some money to, to uh, be able to get at least the schematic design going, which Mike, Mike uh, Myers from TEC is going to be going through uh, in a few minutes. But that was one of the first things we needed to do was, was last year was ask uh, the select board to uh, authorize a warrant article for, I think it was $15,000, $15,000, $20,000 for a schematic design, which is what you're going to see some of that's up on the board here. Um, and that was authorized and uh, you know, we went through an RFP process, uh, got a bunch of responses from engineers, went through all those, selected our, our schematic design engineer and uh, have, have moved on through there. So what you'll see, just to lead off with this, this schematic design is by no means the final design. We just needed something <coughs> to get started with that had the entire sort of town center um, included on it so that we could then go in and identify. So flashing forward, uh, at this previous town meeting, there was a line <coughs> item article for $75,000 uh, for a contract amendment, well not necessarily for a contract amendment, but for additional design, real design I'd call it. So this is the 25% the design, which is a very big step because it includes what Mike's going to talk about in a little <coughs> bit, but that's, that's uh, uh, a very important piece of, of the next step here. So before we got any further, so this was just authorized, what, two weeks ago, <coughs> but before we went any further and spurred on by the town center committee, uh, as far as when we last met and what our recommendation should be is before these guys get started spending that $75,000, let's get feedback first because that first 25% is a big step. It only says 25%, but it's a very, very big portion of it because there's so much upfront stu stuff done. So we wanted to get as much feedback as we possibly can to send them on their way with you know what we all consider the most important facets of uh, what the town center should look like. So I think that's probably enough. Perfect. Okay. And so again, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves sure. and sure. Uh, you've got the floor. All right. Uh, good evening. As Dan mentioned, uh, my name is Mike Myers. I'm a principal with uh, TEC. We're a transportation consulting firm out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Uh, also joined tonight by one of my colleagues, our project engineer on the project, Rebecca Clark. Um, you know, we first started working with the town about six months ago. Uh, as Dan mentioned, we were tasked with working collaboratively with your committee, the town center committee, to uh, put together a potential plan <coughs> that more or less captured the idea, the vision for your new town center. Uh, as part of that plan, uh, we also put together a project that we could uh, apply to the state for some funding. Um, and the, the town did a great job of that, and there's a uh, potential of about $3 million from the state to reconstruct your town center. Uh, those applications went in in February. Took a couple months to hear back, but got the good news, $3 million. And uh, as Dan mentioned, allocated some money for us to begin design. So so what that means, too, if I might yeah, sure. just jump in, is we have a project number. So within the Mass DOT system for the TIP, the Transportation Improvement yep. Project, we have an approved project, but we have no design. So they never authorize the funds for it until you get to the design phase. So that's what we're talking about with our first 25% here. Correct. So we haven't started yet. These are concepts, these are potential ideas uh, to help incorporate what we call complete streets. We want to make sure your town center is not just taking care of the vehicles that go through your town center. We want to make sure it, it accommodates all users. Um, when I think about your town center, this is a snapshot. You have the town hall just to the left, post office to the right, just to the north and just to the south. People drive through on Route 68 at very high speeds, 45, 50, 55, 60. I mean, it's comfortable, it's wide. You can drive very fast north and south of town center. This section here through your town center is very similar to those cross sections of roadway north and south. You can still drive through very fast through town center. Uh, so what the, the idea here, the, the concept is uh, more or less to create what we call a road diet. We wanna take the road and try to bring it in. 
and, and make it a little less comfortable for vehicles to drive at high speeds through your town center. Mike, can I stop you real quick? Sure. I'm going to open the meeting at uh, 7-Eleven. We now have a quorum for the town center committee. Uh, our only agenda item is that we have no agenda and that it is just a community forum to discuss the project. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, so this, this, is, this is a vision, this is an idea, this is a, a thought to make it safer for not just the motorists, again, passing through your town center, but try to make it so people can walk and bike to the Hubbardson Crossing, just off in the distance here, to your town hall, to your town buildings, the library, the school, all located on this side of the graphic. What we're showing here is, is a, what we call a multi-use path. This is about 10 feet wide. This would accommodate bicycles and pedestrians make it safe for everybody on this side of the street. The tra travel lanes, we'd look to narrow these down. They're about 15 feet wide today. They only need to be about 11 feet. <clears throat> You'd see a potential bike lane on this side, so you could accommodate traffic this way. If you didn't feel comfortable in that bike lane, you could still travel within the multi-use path on this side of the road. And then looking to have a new sidewalk on the easterly side as well as well as identifying uh, or defining, more or less defining parking lanes along the westerly side of Main Street. And last but not least, your pedestrian crossings, looking to make those much safer. Uh, this, what you see right here, is what we call a curb extension or a curb bump out. It looks to bring the crossing, tighten up the crossing, so it's a little tougher for motorists to feel comfortable driving fast through there. You bring pedestrians out so they're not blocked by uh, schools, I mean, no, sorry, uh, cars parked on the street, um, and looking to implement what we call pedestrian flashers. Uh, this is a flashing assembly that doesn't flash all the time. It would only be activated if someone were looking to cross the street. You want the, you don't want them flashing all the time because then it doesn't really mean anything to the motorist. You want to bring attention when someone's in the crossing. <clears throat> so this is more or less the vision for the corridor. These three boards here. Uh, basically show you the limits of the project. Uh, you've got the Curtis Recreation Field located here to the north, looking at bike lanes and a potential sidewalk on one side of the street, the easterly side. Taking Williamsville Road, where you've got kind of a, an angled uh, intersection there today. Looking to tee that up more. When it's angled, people do rolling stops. They more or less yield as they enter into Main Street. <coughs> so we want to try to tee that up shorten the crossing, and, and really try to get people to stop. As we work south, uh, doing kind of the same thing at High Street, looking at some short crossings, sidewalk all the way along the east side, continuing all the way down to Brigham Street, and then working from Williamsville Road, this would begin that 10 foot wide multi-use path, heading again all the way down to Elm Street. Uh, we'd look to try and get some, some buffers in there, that's what you see, the, the brick red, looking at some, some buffers to try and get some separation from pedestrians, parked cars, motorists on the road. But those are essentially the, the limits we're looking at. Um, and again, these are what I like to call cartoons. These are conceptual plans. Uh, we have a long ways to go. We have a lot of design detail to look at. Uh, in about two weeks, you'll see some of our crews out there. Uh, they'll have the tripod set up. They'll be doing some mapping of the corridor. We need that information. We need to identify where your property line is, where your mailboxes are, where your driveways, walkways, uh, front corners of your house. We need to know where all of that is so that we can come back with a more detailed design and, and show you how this may or may not work. Um, so again, this t tonight is, is really not about presenting a design for us. It's, it's more about listening, learning, and understanding what's important to you within the town center uh, because Quite frankly, you're the you're the, the people that know most about about your town center. So um, I know we're excited to, to hear from you tonight. So, so if, if I could just um, to, before we start taking questions, um, just to go into the funding a little bit more because you know um, uh, it's a big giant waste of time if if we're going to be thinking about trying to design a project that's never going to get funded. So we had during one of our town center meetings, we had a representative from MRPC who. Um, who basically is on the 
scheme that authorizes the expenditure of the funds that would be used for this sort of work. He talked about the pool of money that they get. You should tell them what um, Sorry, Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. I get afraid sometimes because like, there's so many acronyms. <laughs> um, but that's a good point. So the <coughs> Massachusetts... Yeah, they're, they're, they're something. Right, yeah. the Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. So they're... Uh, the, the agency uh, that oversees the expenditure of the funds relative to this program that we're talking about. And he met with us, gave us a lot of information, and said, you got a good project there. This is, this is something that, you know, um, the, there would be a lot of energy for. So again, we, those are sort of the things we've gone through as far as some of the, again, it's not an assurance, but it's a confidence booster when you have those sorts of people in the room telling you that stuff. And then from the way that this was submitted into the state and, and the relative ease that it went through to get approved as a project itself, you know, and, and some of it had to, to, to do with TEC right off the bat saying, man, first time we looked at this, this town center, you guys have a really good shot at this because you're really wide. So you want this big 50 or 60 foot footprint where you've got to be able to put the flexibility to have your sidewalks, your bike lanes, because those are requirements to be able to be eligible for a lot of this funding, is you need to have those <coughs> components that are part of the work. So all of that stuff was done sort of up front, not up front, but throughout the process so that we can get to a point now where we're not sort of hoping things are gonna go through, but we're, we're getting closer to shore that they're gonna go through as we advance along. So what we really wanna do is get them going. and. Um, just you know, sort of one more comment is uh, overridingly uh, at our town center committee meetings, um, safety has been, you know, first and foremost. Um, and a lot of that uh, has to do with school congestion as well, as what goes off with drop off and pick up and all that. None of that's figured out yet. And that's what we're going to pay these guys to do is to try to think outside the box. You know, are, are, are we have other pathways we can go around the this building, you know, and go around and have drop off So we don't know any of that. Any ideas are absolutely welcome, and that's sort of why we're here. But those are the sorts of things, because we don't have a, a five-mile stretch like Holden. You know, that was just like an overwhelming sort of thing. We have a point, what, four, point whatever. Four. We have a manageable sort of area here with, with a, a few very important safety and other choke points that we, we should be able to figure out. So anyway, that's, that's, I don't know if anyone else wants to comment on that. Um, the only other thing I'd add is that um, the the funding for the final project would be 100% provided by the state funds. I mean, once we've paid for the design work, the state picks up at that point and pays for everything. They pay project management as well as all of the work that would be done. So it's not one of these things where we keep coming back asking for money again and again and again and again. Um, that you know, once we get the design finalized and get it approved, um, then. It's up to the state as to when they can schedule it and when, and you know, taking care of uh, funding the project. So, so um, the next step as far as funding, okay, so it's going to take some amount of months to get this 25% design out there. And then um, uh, the way the plan is, I suppose, to proceed in the same manner that we've been proceeding with, we got a proposal that has broken down 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. We can then, as a committee, as a town, as you know, a town meeting, however we are, are going to be doing it, decide how much more to bite off on the next one. You know, it depends. It's going to be how much momentum we've got, how the town is doing fiscally on other areas. Um, but that's that's going to be sort of our next decision. So we're not sort of locked into any path right now. We're, we've just sort of started and then um, hope to continue with momentum. That's what we've talked about for a year and a half because these committees can fade out pretty quickly. So we've just talked about keeping them somehow, keeping them first getting 15, 20 grand, whatever it was, then, you know, getting this. And so just keeping the momentum going um, so, so that energy isn't lost. So anyways. A question on the multi-use, two questions, the multi-use sidewalk, mm -hmm. what's the difference between that and a regular sidewalk, is this the width? The width, yep. So if you need five feet to accommodate a pedestrian or two pedestrians, uh, the 10 feet gives you enough space for uh, two-way bike travel as well as pedestrian use. Why wouldn't you put uh, multi-use on both sides of the road? You could look to do that. Um, it would be a lot of sidewalk. It would be a lot of sidewalk maintenance for the town. Um, the, thought, the, the thought here is that we can conserve and do less sidewalk, uh, less maintenance for the town, because you could still use, uh, this is good for bi-directional. You can go north-south on that side, so you could stay on one side. That's the, the reason 
behind doing one. And so our DPW, just to add on to that, our DPW director was, he was no longer here now, but our previous DPW director was in on some of these conversations. And his first thing was, you know, how the hell am I going to plow that? It's 10 feet wide, I don't have a... And so our answer is, we don't need all of it wide. You know what I mean? We need a path that a normal sidewalk... Uh, Plower would in the wintertime. There's not a lot of bikes that are going back and forth. So overall, um, you know, some of these questions had had come up as well. Um, so anyway, go ahead, Tom. Another question is, um, you have all these parking spaces along there, and I know you, you're not a zoning expert, okay? But typically in a town, mm -hmm. when, when there's someone wants to put a commercial space in or a building in there, and they need X number of parking spaces. Typically in towns, do they incorporate these parking spaces as usable for zoning? I'm not sure what the zoning. I don't know the, the zoning regs here off the top of my head. Yeah, we do. You can have it. You can have it if you live in the building. You can't have. You can't. You, there's no. I mean, that's in your zoning unit. I know it's a zoning. It's acceptable with a uh, special permit. Yeah. Don't I, I don't know the zoning regs up time, but that's something we can look into. For. So how many, I forget, how many spaces are on this conceptual design here, schematic? Um, was it was like 41 or something like that, am I remembering <coughs> incorrectly? You don't have to count, I, was, uh, I don't know if you knew offhand. It was more than I thought, I, you know, expected, I guess, when we saw the first iteration of this. Yeah, it's about 40 plus. 40 plus 50 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and can you, do you mind, um, you talked about it briefly, but some of the discussions we had that had to do about how sort of free for all it is to cross the street and where to cross the street mm -hmm. and, and the way things look. Uh, you want to just talk a little bit about how, how we've thought about the sidewalks? Sure. So as far as this, you do have a sidewalk um, on Williamsville, looking on this side here. So the thought is you, you continue along Williamsville, head down to the town center there, but then also looking to have an opportunity to cross and then cross back over to a sidewalk here. Um, That's the part that I'm not clear on. I thought that the <coughs> I thought that the project said that it only goes from the corner of Williamsville. I don't understand how you're. It looks to me like you're bootstrapping all the way up to up to the uh, rec field because that was my, my understanding was is that that part is supposed to be part of the north part of the of, uh, Route 68 when that project comes along, and this looks to me like you just added it into the center part. You're correct. There's a, um, basically this, I would call this the core of the project from Williamsville to Elm Street. We still want to show you this opportunity to continue up to the rec field because that is something that could be easily incorporated into that project. That project is pretty yeah. far behind in the design process as so you're well. So you're not talking about doing that with this project. You're talking about doing something with the sidewalks when they, when they come to do no, I, I, but I, A lot of those questions are going to get answered once we get further along in design and have construction estimates. And so the way we were looking at this, we wanted to get a comprehensive design <coughs> that covered all the bases. We didn't want to just draw an arbitrary line and say, oh, well, beyond there, we don't care, right? That would be silly to, to ignore the fact that the rec field is, you know, two-tenths of a mile up the road and then to just have everything all finished here and still have no way to get to the rec field. So get the whole design comprehensively figured out, and then we figure out what portions make sense to be done under which projects, under which budget, and so forth. So but it, that's, we that's want them all to work point. together. We want yeah. all the pieces no, to I work together. I understand, but, but, you, but you, <coughs> you just said, Phil, that, this is, that the entire project would be paid for by the state. Yes. If, mm -hmm. this isn't part of, if this isn't part of what the state defines as being part of this project, this, it, does that mean that the cost comes yeah. down no. to us? There's other no. sources no. of funding from This the is state. all funded. Yeah. Everything that we've yeah. talked about is funded through the state. <coughs> yeah, um, so there's, so, and Mike can talk more about this too. And they actually want to do that. They want us to add sidewalks and they want us to add bike lanes and places. Yep. They incur, I mean, they'll turn projects down if they don't add that kind of stuff. Yeah, so there is, there is the opportunity, like Mike had <coughs> mentioned, to add that to the Route 68 North project. And there's also an opportunity to, with they have like the Complete Streets project, mm -hmm. which the town is working on getting kind of certified to do that as well. So there's an opportunity of biting that off as a different chunk before that north section gets done to get that sidewalk in before that gets repaved. So there's a couple options to get that in. There's three different pots of well, that, state that, funding. That's fine, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But I mean, if you're going to look at going north on that, there's a sidewalk that also goes down to the river and down to the cemetery, which is, which is actually in better shape than the yeah. one that runs through the town. Why yeah. haven't you talked about including that? That one is um, currently, as far as you know, is um, being looked at as part of the Route 68 South 
project already as they're repaving that road also redoing that sidewalk as part of that project so we didn't include it as part of ours since that was being taken care of is that going to have a bike path as well um, that's a potential for like another complete streets I haven't seen the design too. of the subject. I haven't either. I, I, yeah. It might. I don't know. I mean, though. I'm, I'm just taking it from. I mean, it seems. I mean, I'm nothing. I'm nothing against bike paths, but if you're going to create a bike path for one quarter of a mile of 68, I, the the bicyclists are not interested in just having that one thing for that one place. They want it. They want to be able to go with the. I mean, I know. I see the guys go by all the time. They go all the way down 68 towards Rutland. Yeah. That's what, and that's where you need it, as Mike pointed out, because of the speed on that one. Yeah. They're coming through the center of town. They do slow down. They. You better safety there. Though. If you need a bike path, it's for the. It's for the stretches where it's wide open, and they they, they tool down there like like uh, uh, hellfire. So yeah, that's a good question. And yeah, and that's definitely a good point. And I think as part of our committee, we're trying <coughs> to think about you know ways that we can help tie in a couple more things because you're right doing a little quarter mile you know or half mile section is kind of a, a small piece of a bigger pie of the whole town and helping to get t things tied in as well so it's an excellent point to make sure that we get it down there I mean it's, to me it just seems silly if you're going to do I mean it's going to look silly to have no bike path and then you come into the center of town for a quarter of a mile and you set aside all of this property for bike path. I think I can assure you that that section to the south has a bike lane. I haven't seen the design yet but the state wouldn't do a design that doesn't have bike accommodations mm -hmm. and from what I've seen out there there's enough room for a lane yeah. a buffer and a bike lane. No, so I'm I sure think it's not I don't think it's a problem I'm just saying that if, if, if this is the only place you're putting a bike path it seems Silly. Yeah. So a few other comments on, on, on funding and things like that. So the, the first time we started talking about the, um, fr the sidewalk from Williamsville up to the rec field was potentially, um, uh, I don't know how, how much uh, you guys know about stuff like this, but you can put out a proposal and it's got a base proposal that the contractors bid on, but then there are ad alternates. So these, these are work that if, if the contractor will bid on them as well, and if the bids come in including some of these ad alternates, they can be awarded. So we what we didn't want to get into a position was we had maybe too big of a scope that when contractors bid on it, it was too much money and the state said, now we can't do it. So we wanted to make sure we had some flexibility there to maybe have some pieces that didn't necessarily have to go in right away, weren't you know right down the middle of Main Street sort of things that maybe we could add on later if we needed to. So there's some that consideration was made um, during some of our discussions as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a sort of a common thing. And you've heard this complete streets talk a little bit. Um, what briefly the, the complete streets program is, is um, would you mind going into like the couple of tiers and then uh, sort of where we're at now? Yeah, sure. So the town is also uh, involved in what's called a complete streets program. Um, they are, uh, basically it's a three tiered process. The town establishes first as part of the tier one a policy that basically says when you're out doing projects in town you're going to look at opportunities if they make sense to include sidewalks include bike lanes do ada ramps um, improve some crossings uh, those types of, of safety measures tier two is to do a five-year master plan where you look throughout the town and you identify uh, different opportunities approximately 15 projects over a five-year plan uh, we're in a draft state with the town on that because we got 25 and change Correct. thousand dollars that we applied for that we were approved for that she went out and drove all 88 miles in town and <laughs> <laughs> lived another day um, and uh, uh, we're currently in that second phase so once we get through that tier two we move on to tier three and that's where the town can then apply for up to four hundred thousand dollars to implement one of those projects and that project could be the section of Elm Street, I mean, uh, the section of, of Gardner up to Curtis. It could be the section of Elm Street. It could be another area in town. So there's there's opportunities. That's that other opportunity with state funding uh, to receive another $400,000 to make some other improvements. Further gearing the design to have flexibility to be able to potentially use more than just one funding source to get a complete project done. <coughs> I know that she had a question over there too. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> she's behind the camera. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, can you tell me what you think of that after shot there? Yep. Coming out of Elm Street, when these people all park along the road to pick up their kids after school, you're coming out at Elm Street <clears throat> and you can't see any oncoming traffic at all to your left. To the Nothing. Left. And the same coming out of 
um, Brigham to your left when you want to cross over to Elm, even though that's marked as a 35 mile an hour zone, yep. people come through there way faster. So even lowering it to 20, I don't even think is going to right. do the job. There's already a flashing red light there. Is that possible to make that? It's a yellow a, light. It's a flashing yellow. It's a flashing red coming from Elm Street across to Brigham. Yeah, and it's a yellow going down 68. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's a flashing light. Is it possible to make that a stop light situation? Sure. Because it doesn't seem like if you're going to still allow all that parking that you're still going to get the visual, you know, yep. without it. We're going away. So to answer your, to I think build off your first point on speeds, just making it 20 miles an hour doesn't slow people down. Right. People don't look at the signs. You know, the, it just doesn't happen. You need to implement what I talked about earlier, which is that road diet. Try to make it so it's it's more difficult. It's not as comfortable to drive through your town center high speeds. Mm -hmm. Make your lanes four feet narrower. Try to reduce speeds. So that way when you come up Worcester Road heading north, you you do naturally need to slow down. Will that fix everything? No. no. Um, as part of, and we're not there yet, as part of our next steps, we um, I mentioned the mapping. We need to go out there and, and map the area. We also need to do some uh, data collection. We need to collect traffic data. We need to understand how many cars are, are looking to make a left turn out of Elm or Now Brain. somebody put a traffic counter <coughs> across Brigham and Elm Street. We have some data. I, oh, you guys did we it? Yes. I mean, the police department, I think, does that? Or, uh, oh, okay. Or something. Was that in anticipation of this? Oh, okay. Yeah, was, that, was it just recently put up? Like, yeah. yeah the, and then that was recently not, disappeared right. really quick. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. only out, they're only out for 72 hours. Oh, okay. So, those, those so that tubes, was on this. Yep, those tubes you see on the road, what those do is they collect uh, speed data, volume data, and vehicle classification, so you know how many trucks go through here. Um, so we're collecting all that information. And then what we do is we'll take a look at this intersection and see if it does warrant a traffic signal. There are eight warrants and you have their different warrants, whether it's you know you eight hours a day, four hours a day, uh, there's different traffic warrants. Um, my gut tells me it may not meet a warrant. We may be able to um, <clears throat> look at this, the safety aspects of it though, but we're at the very early uh, stages. So we have not shown one here yet because we still have a lot of study to do. We've even, so just to add to that real quick and then, and then Jesse will be next, and Jonathan. Um, uh, <laughs> This is the sort of stuff that just starts rumors which aren't true, but we, we tried to talk about everything and want to continue to do that. But we even talked about, because it's so unsafe taking a left out of there. Yes. Do we make it one way? Do we have that? You can only go, and I know people who live, so we can go any further with that, just bringing it up with those sorts of conversations. Does it make sense? Now that we're changing everything downtown, does it make sense to just think about things like that, that, that um, may, may uh, be a little bit uncomfortable to talk about because it, it ruffles a few feathers, but is that the safe decision to say? Wait, making what a one-way? make Brigham a one-way Brigham one way down. going away from the center so that you could only go away from the center down to, uh, down yeah. because Correct. most uh -oh. of the trouble is people trying to get out of Brigham and cross or go left or right. right folks coming up yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's it was yeah, an idea that's that a, got kicked around it was just I'm just yeah. trying to give an idea well, for that so it's possible in future considerations <laughs> to maybe okay. I know when you're looking left coming out of Brigham there's a property down there that has some large lilac bushes or something that helps obscure the view. They At one point they cut them back and it was a little better. But that's also, it's a hill coming up and it's on a curve. So your visibility, unless you cut that curve and the grade down, isn't going to improve enough, I don't think. And, and you still have the issue of the people parking on the school and at the wellness hub sometimes right to the edge of the parking lot where you can't see past that to even make a left or go across from Elm to Brigham or on to Maine. So yeah, that's somehow all of that has to, I would think, has to get fixed first before pretties. You know yeah, what I mean? Definitely. And you know, there's some, if you look at like that intersection too, um, when the initial thought about doing parking, was that the parking wouldn't stop until or it wouldn't start until after like the wellness hub so it would discourage people from parking there mm -hmm. and there's definitely there's um you know other ways to do things too in the question of if we narrow the road does it increase the site enough so it's some of the stuff that they'll be looking at 
too. So instead of going to drastic measures, are there little things that can be done to help make that better as well? Because we're well aware of the fact that that intersection yeah. is difficult. Yeah, yeah. I, I take a left out of there every day to go it's to my house. It's kind of like playing so. chicken every day, <laughs> yeah. especially at school pickup. You just sit there and you go, all right, one, yeah. two, three, just got it. Yeah, you're, exactly. You're good. All right, Jesse, you want to still go? Uh, yeah, I, I understand the problem of Brigham and uh, 68, but I'm a firm believer in rotaries. Um, in I what? Rotaries. Oh, I think it's in rosaries. No, we <laughs> 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 say a prayer before. Yeah. <laughs> Keep traffic moving. Um, mm -hmm. You only have to look one way. Cars don't come at intersections head on. They come sideways, so there's a <coughs> chance of a head on collision. And if <coughs> I think that would be a perfect spot for a rotary. You don't have to look at traffic in both directions and you don't have okay. to have a traffic light, okay. which is something we yeah. need to try to avoid. So with with a, a rotary or as we a lot of times call it a roundabout, roundabout. the um, that's what I would call it. I was trying to be American. <laughs> 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 We're getting there. <laughs> um, to your point, yes, they are an excellent way to calm traffic and control traffic. The challenge that we run into with roundabouts is that the the diameter of them, the circle of them, are like 110 feet. They don't have to be big. They, <laughs> they, they don't yeah. have to be big, honestly. It, well, it has to be twice yeah, the size yeah, of our right of way. The truck is going to do the 18 wheelers. Yeah. All you have to do is have the, I mean, I've seen roundabouts. Yeah. If we're going to talk European here, you, I've seen roundabouts in England that are about six feet in diameter. They don't have to be huge. I don't know what regulations are here, but just the fact that you have one there, yep tells people that this is a situation where you give way to the oncoming traffic. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I, But I, he's right, with 18 wheelers and especially fire mm -hmm. apparatus, they have huge turning radiuses. You can't put a six foot roundabout there and expect uh, and which, uh, Not uh, that I don't think that a roundabout would be nice, because great. one of the big problems we have is we don't have good enforcement, <coughs> is that we have people tur making U-turns on Main Street constantly. Uh, Especially during when the school when school yeah, lets out. Would true. there be enough room with the uh, High Street, Williamsville Road? That because that's a huge intersection. Why do you need a roundabout though? Yeah. Just to slow the traffic down coming through. And there's no property enough big enough to do that with yeah. GFA sitting almost on the road and the church right there and the fire station it right there. I wouldn't see it there. Brigham Street would be nice, but it's impossible. We don't know the You don't land. necessarily need to have like a center, like you do the, the garden roundabouts. You don't necessarily need to have a center that's, right. that's grass. You could just have a pavement area with or just a round pavement it'd area. Be, so I, I think it'd be great if we had the space. So to ask the homeowners or the people who own yeah. the property. So these are the sorts of things that that we can have them look at. And yeah. th that's why we're here, to say, OK, no, we can't. Or, you know what, maybe we can. We just got to do this. So yeah. I mean, to, just to put it in perspective again for you, this, the width of the road is about 40 feet. The These standards for a roundabout to accommodate the trucks that do come through here is, is going to be in the 100, 110 feet foot diameter. So if you envision a road that's 40 feet, and now we're looking at a circle that's 110 feet wide, that would require the acquisition of all four properties on that corner. Yeah. John, I'll next to that. Yeah. J Jonathan, yeah. you still want to go? Yeah, there, there are other opportunities to slow people down at that intersection coming up, you know, north from the south side there. Um, we've seen them elsewhere in Gardner, like the strobe lights attached to the red lights. Um, that's another way, of, you know, intersection of 62 and 68. I think we have one there, correct, if you're going 62. Um, and then also, uh, DPW probably wouldn't like it, but um, you've seen those rubble strips where it wakes you up as you're coming up to something such as a, a gate or something like that. Um, that'd be great. Um, that would definitely get people's attention because, I, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. You know, you're, you're off somewhere else mentally and you're coming up on the intersection. And you know, having that thing hit your wheels and be like, "Whoa!" You know, mm -hmm. you know, I gotta slow down. So yeah, I, I agree. And and we talked about that with the WRA director too. And he, you were exactly right. They were like, "We're just gonna destroy them with the plows." You know. Right. So obviously that was. So we also had <coughs> talked about you know. Uh, there's no way we're going to put a speed bump there, but they have other ways of doing things, like traffic tables, they call them. So these are gradual sort of come-ups and back down, so that you are 
um, you know, uh, aware that you are not on the same <coughs> surface that you were previously on. So there are certain regulations about that that Michael knows <coughs> more for. But um, uh, the challenge with those um, on a route like this is that uh, they're typically most effective in series. You want to have them spaced like 300 feet or so apart. If you just have one, what happens is someone slows down just to go over that and then they just step on the gas because they just lost all that time going over the, the speed <laughs> the speed table all three seconds um, the other challenge here is that if you have series of them and you do have trucks you're gonna hear them as they go over these bumps so um, this wouldn't be the best application for those race devices good um, where I work in Acton they just put up a new uh, school zone speed sign which because they have traffic that comes right off of route 2 and then just as you go into this little side street you've got a school sitting there the 20 mile an hour during school hours they used to have it didn't work <coughs> now they have a digital speed Your sign speed. with white strobes that just go, they go slow at first and then they start dancing like some angry little man mm. when you hit 30 when you hit 10 over it goes absolutely berserk it really gets your attention more than just a, a white sign with between seven and nine and you know two and four or whatever so that's just a suggestion there but no those are fairly new and and it's coincidentally I think it's I solar too but that brings yep. me to a, a point that i have in general not anything particular here which is is that for one thing you keep talking about the town center it's also a neighborhood okay i mean people i mean i live here all the time and when you talk putting up a strobe light you don't think I already have enough light coming from the town offices when they just put when they put those up and that's been since I've been here that made a big difference the sign which 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 is not supposed to be interiorly lit down by the Harvardston market made a big difference too <coughs> that's the sign I'm talking about is the one coming up from 68 south but, into the center where people do like 50 but there's people who but there's people who live all along Main Street okay it's yeah for me Main Street she's talking I'm talking about before Main. Yeah. There's it would, that um, forested area right there yeah. with no houses. Yeah, I was going to say that would actually affect anybody. Yeah, yeah that sign would actually be right in front of my house. So that? So that type of sign would be right in front of my house. And I think there's a light you come up the hill on the sign. So there is, anyway. Or you further down, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, down there. Yeah, that's, that there's is no right in front of my house. It is, it's, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's right in front of my house. But yeah, and where it is now, I think there is a light on it now, and it actually does not affect. <coughs> All right, um, moving along. Jamie, you're up next. Uh, one thing that we already have that wouldn't cost us anything to slow cars down is uh, a pack of police cruiser here and we take radar. <laughs> and right if you take hits and get a reputation, you know, they're always there. That'll slow people that down really at, at peak times. <laughs> but, uh, the other Brigham, end too. <laughs> Brigham Street, yeah, everywhere. Brigham Street used to run this way. Yep, right and, across the corner. You know, I think you may have discussed that already, and maybe yeah. that could be an option. One way, coming up right turn only. And with parking on both sides or one side for a town event, so if we got something going on in the common, it'd be great to have I do like that park. idea. Even a school event, the overflow could go over there or bus pickup. You could have kid, people, pa parents parking mm -hmm. over here. But if there was like an event on the common, it would be great to have um, an area to park there. Then, you know, if you had an event, you could close the road down. Um, and it may still be a town road. I don't know if it was ever discontinued, but you can still, you know, it follows the sidewalk line that's still there. <coughs> still a couple telephone poles where it used to be. Oh, yeah. that that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I actually got a picture of how it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, representative from the church can speak now. <laughs> <laughs> is it church property now? No, it's not church oh. property, but it is a mass historic registered property as a town common town burial site. And that was done by the town about 10 years ago. The church as well is a Massachusetts historic, um, uh, actually national historic society site. Um, so what was a road as you speak, the church was actually situated in a different orientation as well. So some of those pictures may be deceiving when you look at the historical pictures. What is the active sidewalk across the common is not included in this design 
Instead, you've chose to put a sidewalk along the street. As you can see, what he's talking about is the former road, is the active sidewalk where people actually walk and actually bike. So it's <coughs> a point I'd like to bring up okay. to be included in this, because that's where people are doing it. Um, the second, I have three points. One, the second is the safety at Brigham Street, Elm Street. As everyone knows, that's <laughs> the worst intersection in town. It is. Um, I would hate to see a full-time <coughs> light traffic light there. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think we have the volume of traffic required for that. <coughs> but I would like to see some changes and improvements to the sight lines. The vertical sight line is horrible coming up Brigham Street, and I'm sure in your next design phase, <coughs> you'll um, address a lot of that. Yeah. Um, they did it. Um, <coughs> down at the 68-62 intersection a few years back where they brought the grade down and they changed it a lot and they put up signage. They also put that horrendous blinking strobe. strobe. Because people yeah. still blow straight Which across the street. Which brings me to my third down. concern. I've seen cars go straight across 68 without even slowing Well, we had a propane yeah. Yeah. Propane explosion yeah. sort of thing. I, I mean, uh. and there's been lots of accidents at Brigham and Elm Street too, just horrendous accidents. Yeah. So that's a huge concern for everyone in town. Um, that was two. Two, actually four. Now. Okay. Jesse. <laughs> My third thing is the light pollution and who is going to and how you're going to address that with street lighting and all these other fancy lights. I was. It's nice to hear that these rectangular rapid flashing beacons actually don't. Are motion activated? I would assume. Uh, push button. Push, push button, button activated. Yep. So that's cool. But I'd like to see more about street lights, their placement, their spacing, and something that's relative to Hubbardston and not Holden. <coughs> address that now, Mike, as far as funding Sorry. source. Go for it. Um, uh, I would just, I'll just address yeah, uh, sure. because I should have. I wrote that down before and haven't had a chance. <coughs> but, uh, so lighting is uh, is an aesthetic. Uh, and wouldn't be paid for by the state. So it would cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars to install a new lighting system underneath the ground with any sort of lamppost that we chose that is not gonna probably be allocated by the town for that. So we have, we were told that long ago uh, and, and hadn't gone very far uh, with that because uh, it, it just seems so far out of the realm of possibility. I forget how many a hundred thousand dollars it was for this portion of it yeah. so so we've sort of focused on saying okay what what lights are currently still there what type of lights they are whose houses they're affecting because they're on you know and um, trying to make sure we're thinking of lighting but not like this grand <coughs> new lighting scheme because almost specifically because of cost nobody wants it to look like Barry Center well, center. 30 years ago, we shut street lights off right. because we couldn't afford them in town. Yeah. So the minimum that we have now everyone is supposedly yeah, what we can afford. Everyone shared. Yes, and everyone shared. No, no one particularly enjoys light pollution. We live in Hubbardston for many reasons, and one is is not the suburban but the country yeah. essence that we have and choose to to try to maintain here. So Can I add in here? Uh, Mike, well, go ahead. Is it lights? I'm the one that I'm going to be the yeah. street light lady in okay, town. Okay, street light lady. Um, my reasoning for street you already are. asking for street I am. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason I asked for street lighting, the purpose was, is we're putting in all these solar farms. And I'm there. Wouldn't it be nice if you go by solar farms and they're going up all over? Um, which is fine. Couldn't we get something out of it, directly get something out of it? And I thought that we would put, and I'm saying street lights, not lighting, mm -hmm. street lights, meaning <coughs> there's one, two, three, let's say Brigham, then there's two small streets, and then there's yeah, the first thing High Street, and then there's a church. Just on Main Street, because Main Street is pitch black when you come down at night. <coughs> there's no welcoming of any lighting. And I, it's nice because you can sleep at night without having lights <laughs> in your bedroom. But, but the street light company has a very soft lighting that I now have in the front of my house. It's much lighter. Um, it's an old-fashioned light, actually. And after, if I can show, you can take a look at it. 
and it's very soft. You can barely I'm not good with see it. it. You're not good with seeing it? Okay. Well, anyway, it's very soft. It's like the old-fashioned lighting, so it wouldn't show up. But <coughs> complaints, and I guess maybe a lot of people don't complain or ask questions, but if it's huh? raining hard at night or it's very <laughs> dark, well, it depends what board you're on, I guess. <laughs> um, you can't see, and there was one particular night I was on my way through town uh, this past winter, and it was very dark. The roads aren't uh, marked very well at that time, and I couldn't <coughs> discern um, Route 68 and Williamsville Road. So you have to stop almost directly right in the road and take yeah, that's, a, that's 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 fine but we've got we, that all the rest of the town is 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 just as dark so why why do you have trouble driving through the center of town being dark when if you live up on new templeton road or williamsville road when you're taking a turn is what it is on a road well, not there are on a, there are turns, not in a there's, driveway there's cross on street up on new templeton road there there's you know there's all sorts of cross streets all along you, do you want to put street lamps at every intersection throughout the entire town because otherwise but you're just picking on the center. No, I'm not picking on the center. I said that's where my problem was. Right. And if you were to, See, I mean, maybe a lot of people only <clears throat> are up um, from morning till dusk and don't go out at night. I don't know, but um, there are streets, not driveways, not anything that you can't see. And I don't know why the police department didn't, um, they were asked, I guess, to what their study would be. They're the ones that are out there at night. And they're the ones, our emergency crews are the ones that have to take those turns so in the middle of the night. If I can just sort of interject this a little bit so we can, we can move on a little. Um, part of uh, how we haven't really incorporated lighting into what we're here tonight for specifically, which is the town center committee stuff. I think what that goes to a little bit more because it's not really included in our scope. Not that it's to be ignored by any means. And since you brought it you up, you still have street lights in those. You have street lights. They're not on, but you have street lights on the streets on Main Street. Correct. But as far as there. as far as the town center committee design team, all that sort of stuff, that's not really part of uh, what we are necessarily that's more of like a, a town like to the board of selectmen or to some other board sort of uh, well, we discussed that before. we did and we're currently researching it with we, we I just got this right, big long email that down. identifies every poll and who owns it and the shared polls in town and all that stuff so we we're going down that path to sort of identify all that but I think just just and I'm, I'm not you know squashing conversation by any means but I think just because it's not really part of our overall town center committee <coughs> purview and I guess what we're tasking um, TEC to do is I think we've had some good conversation, but I do sort of want to move it along. If that's oh, all right. Actually, can I interject yeah. one quick thing about that? One one final thing is that I think we did, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think at one point we did speak about the possibility of leaving options open for the future, and I think uh, Mike, you could correct me if I'm wrong. But most of the cost of installing any type of street lighting is opening up the the roads again and digging the trench and installing the wires. So I think we had thrown around the possibility of while we're installing sidewalks and that sort of thing, yeah. just running the conduit just to keep options open for the future. You're correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to speak to the concerns that you have um, in terms of light pollution, you know, going around town, going around to other communities, a lot of these these uh, standalone light posts, not from the, the actual telephone pole, will face, uh, some of these are not like the ones, I know the ones you're talking about in Holden that have nothing over them and they just blow out light in all directions. They have ones that are more downward facing. I'm thinking of the ones that are over at the superintendent's office at Quabbin for instance, that are downward facing and I don't think would throw that light pollution into your bedroom or living room late at night. Well, just if you're ever on Williamsville Road, right after the country hen is a street light. That's ours, we pay for that. And that's a very soft light. You could barely, I mean, I ju we just changed it because I didn't like the bright light either, but um, they never offered it before openly because it's less expensive okay so that was the point so they are very soft jesse um, yeah so a, a couple of things one i'm going back to something that nancy said um and this is maybe out of this project to think about for planning purposes that i always think of the town center as being more than just a lineal thing it's a circular thing mm -hmm. and um so I, I always think it's a real shame that there's no sidewalk going down 
Brigham Street to Evergreen Road because that actually makes a really nice walking loop for people, um, except there's one very short section on Brigham Street that is very dangerous, and I, I would love to see a sidewalk incorporated into that little section of the street so the whole town center can be walkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing is, maybe <coughs> this is gonna be addressed later on, but since we're talking about lighting and digging up the road, there's not much I like about Holden, to be honest with you, but one thing I do like about Holden is that they buried all of their power lines along Main Street underground, and it really <coughs> made, it, it makes it look very attractive not to see those overhead lines and I didn't know if that was something that came up in discussion. It did. It's just can touch on both of them. Go ahead. The, um, to your first point on the town center as a circle, that's an excellent point. Um, as part of our draft master plan, the prioritization plan that we're working with the town on, we've looked at uh, opportunities to spur off of the town center with sidewalks as part of that complete streets funding program. Uh, and then to your point on burying the utilities, yes, that looks great, but it's very expensive. It's millions, millions, and for oh, for a half a mile, I mean, this could be anywhere from two to three million dollars just to bury the utilities. And the state won't pay for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's actually somebody. Else. Wait, I have it written down. Jonathan was next. Um, concern was brought up about lack of light and not being able to see the road and the curbs. Um, I've seen in Paxton. Um, you go on 56 and you take the turn to continue on out of town. They have re reflectors built into the curbs. Um, so that would be an option, um, especially if we don't like the light in the center of town because, you know, we, we like, you know, yeah. rural Hubberston. Um, reflectors built into into the road so that your cars are are the ones producing the light. We're not providing it for the driver. The driver's producing it for themselves. Okay. What are they built What are they built into? And, and They're built into the granite curb. Okay. Um, if you go down 56 heading north out of town, you need to take that right by the church. 56 north. They're built right into the curb, so okay. at night you, you can actually see the curb as you're taking that right. We talked about that for the road, and that was one of those things that was like, again, a DPW nightmare because water gets in there, it freezes, it causes you know cracking conditions and all that sort of thing. So It, it was a granite curb. No, 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 I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I like the curb. It, it was actually, they actually grow, uh, grouted out little holes and put mm -hmm. the reflectors into, mm -hmm. the, into the curb. Yeah, and I think that would address some of the concerns we had had with putting them in the road. Nancy, and then Peter? Well, and just then. a comment on the lighting. I think there's a lot of high-tech products that will be incorporated into resurfacing the paint street with the painting and the reflectivity of it all. So, what is this footprint on the existing main street? So, right now, if you're on the west side where the sidewalk is now yeah. we have a sidewalk that's horrible and then we have the grass median strip and then a funky shoulder mm -hmm. let's just call it that yep. um so how far does this footprint extend onto what we have existing and into the front lawns of people that are on main street on sure. that side excellent question um to be determined to be determined. We, we still need to go out and get that mapping okay. um, that you'll see started. The ballpark is, a couple you know, a couple inches is a ballpark. Couple feet. We've gone out there, we've taken some preliminary measurements of what the cross section is today. And, and you say it's nice and wide already. It is so. wide. It, it's really wide, and, and we're fairly confident that, you know, we're going to be the back of that multi use should be able to be close to the back of the sidewalk that's there today. That's what I was thinking. That's, that's our hope. the same footprint that's as what we never, is today. We never want to. A lot of people are worried about that. Yeah. No, and, and we're always. You know, there's the edge of the road, mm -hmm. and then there's the edge of the right of way, mm -hmm. and then there's that area in between that, you know, you mow and, and you take and, and you maintain, and, and it's you know, it's essentially yours. So we we are cognizant of that. So um, again, the hope is to meet the back of the sidewalk today, Peter. And how about oh, sorry. how about on the other side? On the other side. There was never a formal sidewalk really. It was always just a dirt footpath. But it There's a couple was, little areas where there is one, right? It yeah. was um, yeah. just like, I'm never really sure where the right of way was on that side of the street. I, you know, I know lots of people that mm -hmm. live on that side of the street. It was just a footpath right, right. through their grass. <laughs> I have yeah. pictures from way back when, and it was a real sidewalk once upon a time. <coughs> Like 1900, it was a real sidewalk. Well, well it was removed in the 1960s when they brought 68 through town as a formal state highway. 
Peter. Okay, well, uh, well, we had a very heavy storm last night. It's very easy for me to observe how, with that enormous amount of rain coming down, where the water is flowing. Now, I sort of know on my own because, it, you know, I'm, I'm big on stormwater management. I don't have a, uh, a paved side yard so that the water flows. I also have a dug well. So where the water comes from and the rest of it is very, very important to me, the quality of it. And of course, that's all. And the fact is, is the DCR, is, and I'm sure, is going to want to hear something about about how this is going to impact impact the environment here. Uh, one of the, there's a stream that runs behind my house. It runs the entire length of Main Street from Mr. Mike's. I think isn't that right, Mary? It comes it comes up from Nancy. somewhere up on up that way. <laughs> Nancy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of the name of the stream, and it starts. Is it is it Natty Natty? No, no, it's not Natty. It's not Natty. It doesn't have a name. It's and then it runs There's down the down street, he crosses Parsons <coughs> Road and That's through right. the park and then goes, goes house, down into the, into the, the meadow. And then it goes down into the river. Goes into the meadow and it heads but that, down all of that water there. essentially, you know, that flows down into that mm -hmm. stream. And that's what feeds Boston into Plavin. And of course, the other thing is, as I'm concerned, is that you know I'm already getting a huge amount of water from Main Street like, like it did last night. I mean, all of that, because I sit down. Not all the houses don't sit level to Main Street. I sit down, so all of that water comes down on me. Uh, and I'm sure that other people have similar kinds of things too. So what, what's going on with that? Is that sure. part of this project? Absolutely, 100%. Stormwater, is, it's not only important to you, but it's important to the town. It's important to us, and it's important to MassDOT. MassDOT is the one that's going to be reviewing this. They have an environmental section uh, that will do a very in-depth review of this. Um, what you'll see on, the, if you see this, this gray area here on the, on the plants, anywhere we introduce this multi-use path or well, the sidewalk on either side, you're going to have a six inch high granite curb. And what that's going to do is take the runoff in Main Street, keep it in Main Street, have it go in the new catch basins and be captured that way. Where's the new catch basins going to go? I mean, I where's the know. water in the catch basins going to go? To be determined once we get the details and get into some more of the design. Uh, it'll go, we, we always try to maintain the existing discharge points that are there today. So we try to find where that stream is, the wetlands, and try to make sure that where water discharges today, we try to maintain that same pattern. We never want to alter patterns and take and dry out a wetland and then surcharge another wetland. I'm not aware of any. Uh, uh, Main Street <coughs> doesn't have any yeah. drainage, but Brigham no Street does down to Brigham yeah. Pond. Yeah, there are right. several storm drains on Main Street, <coughs> especially down towards down Mr. Mike's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, down that way. Yeah. Yes, so there's, try nothing, to, there's nothing from there down. But that's all downhill from your property. Road, it's a ditch under the... So we're not under okay. the, 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 the... There's Was MS4 regulations? Do you know those? So there is certain stormwater regulations that somewhat recently came into play that we're not a big enough town to have to deal with. So we could have had a nightmare to actually get approvable designs as far as what we're doing for discharge. But I think that this, I mean, I do this stuff for, for work too. So um, I think that um, the, the smaller area that we have to manage and the sort of natural crown that we have already. It's not like we're going into a real belly or anything like that. It feels like we should be able to figure it out as far as keeping the water away from, from you guys. Well, it'll, be, it'll be a major improvement to what you yeah, have well to It's not just Main Street. The part that I would the even more important is Elm, is Elm Street. It's eroded right now over by, uh, by uh, um, the, uh, the law office there. That whole section there is, I mean, just drive down there. The whole street is just being destroyed by, by a runoff. It's a real it's issue. Really the second one that was in the school? No. Down. No, 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 it went down yeah. Worcester, Worcester Road. Yeah, that's way overdue for resurfacing. Cool. Right. You know, that's the same way. It's been since 1965. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. mine. Right. Now, what are you going to do with the, what, what's going to happen with the mailboxes? Those are all in the median right now. Everybody is, you know, mailboxes in front of my house is on the median. So it's my mailbox. When you say median, the grass area in the sidewalk. The, the intent would be to put them within the buffered area. And who's going to do that? The contractor. Contractor. So everybody, everyone, everyone's mailbox would be put in these. I mean, I, I'm looking at it and saying, like, what am I supposed to do? Get a pile driver and, and go through the contractor? No, please don't do that. It's a standard item. For the state has a standard item to remove and reset mailbox. So we'll go out, we'll locate them all. Once we get into the design, we'll identify which ones need to be relocated. The state will relocate them for you. 
Tom? At the <coughs> intersection of Route 68 and uh, High Street, there's a telephone pole, right? As you, as you drive out, <coughs> if you're looking left. Oh, yeah, that's all. Right. If you're looking up yeah. south, yeah. <laughs> there's this telephone pole that I keep. I'm driving, I'm looking, I says there's nothing coming, and Jesse screams at me. It's the car coming because I can't see it. Um, is that intersection either pole going to be moved, or is the intersection junction going to be further out onto 68 so that doesn't destroy your line of sight? So we're going to take, we'll certainly take a look at that. We'll be taking a look at intersection site distance at all of the intersection street, all of the intersecting streets. Um, right now, the, the intent is to take High Street and try to more or less tee it up, pull it more to the north, so that may help with the site distance. We'll look at it more uh, once we get into design, but. Do you know what I'm talking about? The yeah, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and speaking of the utility poles too, there may be, you know, like you said, when we're setting the sidewalks and stuff, there is some consideration for just some utility poles need to move a little bit so we don't have a pole in the middle of the sidewalk or things like that as well, so it's definitely part of the considerations as we're going through the planning phase as well. Jonathan? I need an observation. Um, so northbound parking is going to be removed out in front of the school there, correct? To replace with the bike lane. Um, I also noticed that the crosswalk between the library and the post office is going to be removed according to the topical graph that you have, contrary to <coughs> the street view that you have there. Um, with the northbound parking being removed, would it be less likely or less of a need to have that crosswalk right out in front of the school and instead have that move down towards the library to the post office? Or maybe you have both. Because there's no northbound parking, why would you need to cross the street right there? There's really Certainly nothing there's no northbound other than the parking. church. Correct. Right. Yeah, it's currently um, illegal to park on the northbound side. I'm sorry? It's currently illegal to park on the northbound side. <coughs> well, There's a hundred signs there telling for, me to do For, for offloading anyways for, for yeah. school. So, um, but, but my point is that you have a crosswalk right there that <coughs> goes to the church basically. And then you have to walk all the way down to um, where Mr. Mike's is to get to the next. There, there's a crosswalk across. There, no, believe me, there's a crosswalk. Oh, I, I know that. What I'm saying is that they're planned no, the now. Oh, they no, 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 no. That's right. That's they're, right. They're going to remove no, it. And no. my, my argument is if there's no north why would you have the crosswalk there? Why not have it down by the post office right. according to the new plans? Which is where it gets used. Most Correct. I, I, I use that one in front of the post office more than right. I do the one right in front of right. the school. Everywhere. So. And the that, kids who walk to school use the one in front of the school and not the one in front of the post office. So it's kind of six, one half dozen the other. And you don't want to have nine crosswalks within a quarter mile stretch of road. Correct. And what I'm saying is I'm more likely to use the one out in front of the post office and the library than the one right Take away that northbound parking. The one in front of school. There's, there's really, other than the church, there's really nothing else there to use that crosswalk for, other than the houses. You could walk down the sidewalk to the post office. You could. I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying you could. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 When we yeah. use the road there between the library, the school, and the town hall, I'm usually crossing right there between that parking lot and the post office. Mostly because the post office doesn't provide enough parking. Yeah, they have space. Yeah, I mean to build up the space. I think they're not allowed by the owner of the property. They could, they could petition. They, they're the people who lease that property. They certainly could. I think they tried it, but you, know, you can ask. Oh, and so now, so now what we have is we have a we have a mess up there because they they've taken and made it de facto for four unit parking there, and it's not it's just right on the street. That's basically town property, isn't it? I don't know. Well, well, it's ten feet. It's ten. Feet. I mean, if you're taking in front of my house, which goes ten feet right up to right past the right past the sidewalk up to where well, I am, saying they, then certainly it's the same thing across. Right. So yeah. they're they're essentially taking it's that that's town property. There's a curb there. They go over the curb and they've created parking there. And there's that that awful looking fence in the back. Yeah. Good. Um, but there's a guy on there. The street. consideration for the school right. parking right. drop off right. on that. Southbound right, side of the, the road. Post office can say that is is it or has anybody considered that where you come down past the Slade Building here, it goes to a parking area outside of the gym to like maybe wrap that around and through the parking lot so parents could line up down that road 
to pick up kids and come out on Elm Street and then back out. We did it's, talk about it. It's been fun. But, you know, there are other concerns about, you know, there's a 911 call, you know, and then the uh, the, the police is going to get out of here real quick. So the, 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 it spurred on a few other conversations that did, it, did we make ourselves less safe, you know. Uh, okay. So, but no, it's, I don't, I, I still, I don't know how we fix the whole school drop-off situation besides totally restricting any of it on Main Street and enforcing that <coughs> through some sort of enforcement action. But, but still, so I still, I think that sort of conversation should still stay on because if there's a way... I um, mean, the only other way is to build a new police station. <coughs> that may happen uh, within this yeah, time frame. So, Dan, just to build off that too. A lot for it, though. Yeah. The um, the other reason you don't see the other reason you don't see improvements through this area or through this area, and they're all focused along the street. Right. That's a requirement when you're using state funding. Yeah. You need to use it within the public way. That's oh. why we haven't shown some of those, you know, very important possibilities possibilities through here. And through here, those aren't shown on this map because you can't use state funding. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I have checked off everyone who had their hand up. Does anyone else want to? Uh, ask me, Jamie. Uh, uh, I would just like to see or consider that you run the uh, road to the end, uh, the improvement to the end of the rec field, if possible, if the money's there. Just because of all the kids and the traffic, I see that it stops right <coughs> at the beginning of the rec field. Okay. And if we could get it to the end of the rec field. The sidewalk? Or yeah, the road? sidewalks, yeah, just sidewalk. what, whatever improvement. Because um, the road, that'll be done with, with the northern okay. section of 68. That's oh, yeah. sort of a separate piece that was talked about. But we, it's a good question about the sidewalks. We hadn't yeah. really talked about whether or not a sidewalk would And, and then I imagine continue. there'll be no parking on the roadside, the breakdown lane in front of the rec field. So uh, maybe just to, like, yeah, consider a sidewalk all the way up there. And, you know, I don't know if they'd leave the entrances and exits the same for that rec field, but that gets a lot of traffic on the weekends. I mean, it is jammed. Then when they park on the road, you're coming out of the rec field, you can't see anything <coughs> coming at all just either. That's that's yeah. just a line of sight issue too. Yeah, Mike, we should get the Mulder McBroom plans for both the north mm -hmm. and south section yep. you know we'll answer all these questions they've all been sort of designed uh we paid for that long ago so we we have an answer to what it looks like for some of those because it's a good question it's like okay we got the sidewalk that comes up to the edge of the parking lot but then we're going to be having a bike lane and we have that little pavement island that's there how is that going to work so some of that has already been answered by others three years ago or not necessarily answered but put on preliminary designs and and it's an important thing we have to integrate what we're going to be doing into that so we, we should definitely find that and out and then i think just any parking you know the town needs to look for in down you know to the future for a you know parking lot somewhere you know on long main street i don't know what you know i heard the talk about next to the post office there's an empty lot and then there was a lot like a lot over here that may have been for sale at one time but you know, because the re the rec field, you know, that gets jammed, and I don't know if there's anywhere. Not that it would be part of this, but that's something the town maybe would want to consider. Early it's discussions that we had too had to do. You know, we we're just throwing everything out there. We said, okay, well, are we going to get a new fire station? So we we'll knock down the fire station. Should we put parking there, or do we put a little park there? Do we integrate all that into the circle that we were talking about the town center being as well? So yeah. you know, those are those are getting closer to actually you know making decisions. Yeah. Peter, you're next. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just to add on to that too, our hope also is that by getting a sidewalk to the rec field that more people that live in the center who feel like they can't walk because it's so dangerous because you know me personally i live just beyond the brigham street and you know it's only a half mile i would love to walk with my car two girls down to the rec field but it's not safe with a three-year-old and a five-year-old no, to no. walk down the side of the street so we're hoping that that will help ease a little congestion and we'll definitely you know have to see as far as you know the future options of getting <coughs> some more parking you know here and there as we move and yeah. we see how this affects and hopefully helps that as well. Peter? And, well I've, I heard I don't you haven't mentioned this but I heard that you're also talking about taking out some trees on Main Street. Right. No? No I mean it's, it's to be determined once uh, we identify. To be determined but we need to identify where those trees are so we can make sure that we're not impacting them. But this, this type of project, I mean, we, we look to retain and maintain every healthy tree if possible. And, and if one does have to come down, we always look to mitigate with new trees. Okay, that's the, and then I see that you've got some green spots here. Um, some that apparently don't exist right now. And then you're taking out some of the ones that do. Uh, again, I'm looking towards being in a neighborhood and making it look presentable. I mean, you know, 
putting in more parking lots only makes it mo look more in urban and in industrialized. Mm -hmm. It doesn't soften the, the look at all of the downtown. To me, it, it doesn't it detracts. Mm -hmm. And you're already putting in a huge amount of, of cement, which we don't have already, and brick and everything else. Sure. So, um, I, you know, is, there, is this month, can there be, is there going to be money for green as well? Happy to touch on that. So the, all this green, Williamsville Road, High Street, I mean, this is where you have Williams, uh, Williamsville Road, you have a sea of pavement, High Street, sea of pavement, opportunities for green space at both intersections. See all this green space through here. The reason you don't <laughs> see the green in here is because it's very narrow. It's only going to be a, a one to two foot section of grass which essentially turns into dirt at that point. So it won't look very nice. Uh, so we look for opportunities here. Anytime you're two feet or less, to do more of what we call a hardscape, not a greenscape, but there's a lot of opportunities down through this section and up along the easterly side for lots of greenscape. Jonathan? <coughs> uh, yeah, the discussion earlier about the sidewalk up to the right field, um, I would recommend it as a higher priority option because I've actually had a few close calls with kids jumping out in front of me or near me as I'm coming northbound going between the school and uh, sorry the rec field and Mr. Mike's or the plaza there on the mm -hmm. on the side yeah no it's that's a yeah. crazy area there Jesse um, yeah the sidewalk up to the rec field um, I'm thinking whole center here a lot of people use high street as a walking loop so to continue that sidewalk if you're redoing means uh, you know, 68 north of the rec field to continue that sidewalk all the way up to the end of High Street. Uh, there's a lot of people, especially when ball games are on, uh, the parents like to use that loop. So, so the complete streets things we talked about before, yeah. you know, one of the items on here is high street sidewalk reconstruction. So that's one of those ones that we're trying to, because right. we know we want to have funding to do everything, but... Yeah. I'm not talking about, yeah. I don't think it's even necessary on high street, it's such a quiet road, but people use high street as part of that loop. But I know a lot of people are now afraid to walk along 68. Oh. So yeah. if you're taking the sidewalk all the way up to the, now the north end of the rec field, just continue it all the way to the end of High Street. Then you're safe walking along 68 and High Street's a pretty safe loop anyway. A lot of people use that loop while they're using the mm -hmm. rec field. I think that's, that's a good point. Nancy? I'd just like to say that the plans look really great. Um, I am an engineer. Most of you guys don't know that. <laughs> Dan knows that. <laughs> um, the addition of the sidewalk up to the rec field is huge. I mean, why have a rec field if you can't walk to it? Um, if future planning, like you say, north and south of there, including more um, footpaths and bike paths around Brigham, around the High Street Loop, even all the way down Barry Road to um, Barry Falls Dam, which is a huge underused recreational area that we have access to in town. Um, but the plants look great. I really like the safety aspect and all the thought you guys have put into this as far as um, how Main Street is currently used. And, and I think it will be a huge improvement to the town as long as there's no street lights. <laughs> Soft lighting, even if it's on the curb. All right. Um, this has been great. Uh, has, has anyone else uh, got anything they want to? A welcome to Harper's Inside. You know, made it down by brick. Oh, yeah. You know, beautiful. You know, Just make, sure, make sure you look at your signed bylaws, though, to make sure that it's yeah, in compliance. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a question. Sure. Um, this is my first time at one of these meetings. I'm actually very new to Hubbardston. I'm a business owner across the street. Welcome. Um, thank you. My question is I was invited um, here. Um, it looks like you guys are very new and very early in the planning process. Um, like as a time frame, when is all this going to happen? As a business owner, I need the traffic, so I'm just curious as to when construction's actually going to start. All right, yeah. uh, uh, well, I'm going to field cool. that. Go ahead. Okay, so we, uh, as we said before, we've got authorization to do the first um, seventy-five uh, thousand dollars worth of the design, which is in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand total to do the entire project. So there'll be a, at least one, maybe two additional requests of the town to authorize additional funds from some available source that is sort of determined at budget time. So I would expect um, that uh, first, before I finish that, when would you think the 25% design is going to be done? 
Uh, service should be done end of the summer. We'd start design, I'd say, sometime this fall. So this fall. Yeah. So the, the, we have two opportunities. Our next two opportunities, if we don't ne feel like uh, or are going to be calling a special town meeting specifically for additional funding for the town center, we have a fall town meeting uh, that is uh, going to be uh, scheduled for uh, <coughs> what is singularly the senior center uh, right now after we get bids in. So there, if, if, if the design's done at that point, and, and it, it makes sense to ask the town whether or not to authorize additional funds for the town center, depending upon how far along these guys are, then yes. If not, that additional would probably go on to next June's town meeting for additional funding, which would mean then they'd have to complete the, the remainder 75% of the design, which would take next year. And if we got approved, you know, perfect scenario, the following year, you know. So we're not like banging on your doorstep quite yet, but uh, we're further along, I think, than we thought we'd be when we first started this process. It's not unreasonable like thinking it could be three or four yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. 2019, 2020. Sure. Yeah. And this is, not, this is not so much on this, but since we're talking about the downtown in 68, is there any way to get something put into town to stop the, the wheelers from using their Jake brakes in town? We've got our you can't restrict it. You can. There's some debate whether or not you can put up a uh, put up a sign that says, "No Jake break use" or "Please no Jake break use" or something like that. Well, why can't we limit? limit? Why, why why is why is it a no? Mike, do you remember why? The, it's a safety, a state safety law. It, it had to do with. Like I'll have to get back to you. Know, we we looked into that. Oh, you, because I know that there are towns down in the Cape who have. Yeah, I don't think they're supposed to either. So we. Can um, no, I mean, I know that, I know that, I, I, you know, from having been on planning board, I know that that's, that's something that down the Cape, yeah. that they have, they, they restrict it down there. And, it, and I look at, I look at where we live here on Main Street as being not dissimilar to someone who lives on Route 6 yeah. down in the Cape with the amount of traffic that goes through. Well, we'll answer that. We, I, I feel like... I saw a DOT like blur blog and it said yeah. you can ask to limit but you cannot say no Jake break use. Because you because if for some reason for, for safety, safety reasons issues, if a Jake break was needed to, to be used yeah. and we said no and they crashed it's our fault. Yeah. You know that that sort of stuff. So I I don't remember exactly, but yeah. you're you're right. There was something. That doesn't mean that they you don't have to say it's prohibited. There's all sorts of different languages. Right. Yeah. We have, yeah. 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 half a million say, words in English. I'm sure we can come up yeah. with some other way that's going to deter it without <laughs> saying out out and out you're breaking the law by doing this. Okay. So. Yeah. Yep. And definitely as we. Finish, you know, because the I mean, signage I, I, issues I mean, there are lots of times that I can't have a conversation on my own porch. I mean, I can be standing <coughs> right there, and I could, you wouldn't be able to hear you because of the because. Of, well, you know that they, they, they use them on Main Street. Yeah, they yeah, do. Of course, they do. You know really? Yeah. yeah you oh my oh, yeah, God! Yeah, yeah, that's the number yeah, one place they use today. them. Yeah. I can hear them start up at yeah. Mr. Mike's because they're tooling right. down there at 50 miles an hour, and they realize they have to brake. And of course, that's a big savings on gas for them, or diesel, is the case. No, it's safe. It's safe to break shoes. It's safe to break shoes. That's the word. Still, I mean, it's a savings. So then, you know, these are. I'm sure the guys who drive here regularly notice them. Now. Oh, the guys who are coming through from Quebec. Right? It also helps them stop when they've got a heavy load. They can't rely on the work fully. That's why they use the Jake brake. It stops the horse when they're carrying the heavy load. That's not the reason they're using them when they come through town. But when they yeah. kick it in, starting at New Templeton Road and run it all the way down to Mr. Mike's, I mean. That's what he's listening to. I mean, yeah. I'm familiar with the I'm familiar with the scenario. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So j j people that's overuse something, them. Absolutely. Something, something yeah. we'll we'll definitely be looking into. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, anything further? I guess anyone have? Are you going to change the speed limit on the center of town? I, I can address that. What's that? I can address that. No. So yeah. Can they change it? He's going to so address it. Does the state it. allow you to change it? The, the state has a process uh, to change speed limits. And what we typically caution towns on is that the way the state mandates the speed, they regulate the speed, it's based on how 85% of the people drive. So we caution towns by saying you go out and measure how people are driving, and if they're driving faster than the speed limit, the state could tell you potentially to raise the speed limit. So our hope is with this project, we narrow up that cross-section, we'll naturally get people to drive slower through town, 
and then you should see a significant change there. But, and, and the reason the state does that is, you know, the perception is slower speeds are always safer, but that's not the case. What's just as dangerous is having two cars. One of them wants to drive fast, and the other one's driving 25 because the speed limit says 25, and now you get the driver that's impatient, and it's it's an even worse uh, scenario. That's the case. Route 2 should be raising theirs to 75. <laughs> 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 All right, well, uh, once again, um, you know, we spent an hour and a half here. Uh, didn't exactly know how this was going to go, and I don't. I don't think it could have gone any better. I know we, we, you know, we don't have a massive turnout here, but hopefully people are able to take a look at it um, online. But I guess the important thing to take out of this is this this forum sort of thing doesn't end tonight by any means, you know, because there's a long way to go, and we'll be doing this again, so multiple times, where we're going to have more information on there. We'll have the ability to. Uh, to change things, but I think you guys feel like you've got some, you this know, was, thank direction. You. This was very helpful. Very helpful. Uh, and then, um, I guess that's it. Anyone from the uh, town center committee have any fur further? We don't have any agenda items tonight. So, anyone else have anything else? No. I'll take a motion to close the meeting. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And the meeting is closed. So, thanks again for coming.